Ah, here we are again. It's a Tuesday afternoon. Wait a minute. It's Tuesday. Doesn't that mean it's Taco Tuesday? But this sign over here, that doesn't say tacos. That says pupusas. Ah, pupusas. So hey y'all, it's me, Amy Marie again. I wanna thank everyone for watching the octopus video uh, that we did last night. So this is night two of the dinner challenge that my husband, uh, like I said, challenged me to do. Um, so a little story for you. I'm actually at the gym. I'm gonna go in and work out because tonight's dinner, I am planning to pig out. I'm serious about that. Anyway. So, um, I want to give you a little background about tonight's dinner before I head into the gym. Um, I have to give credit and uh, I got to thank my friends back home in Lompoc, California. Uh, Lori, and I'm going to be honest, my fibromyalgia hit me. Your hubby. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot his name, but uh, please forgive me. Anyway, um... <laughs> So my friend Lori, her husband, um, and they introduced me to this wonderful, amazing El Salvadorian dish called pupusas. And pretty much what it is, it's a, it's a corn um, pocket, corn like flour mesa pocket, and it has beans, it has cheese, you can put meat into it, and oh, so good. They are amazing. The first time I had it, I was hooked. So I've been watching videos on uh, Facebook for a while, and I'm going to keep saying that because that is what I do. I watch videos on Facebook. A lot of food, a lot of crafting, and on um, Tasty, uh, their feed, they have pupusas. And so I've been watching it for a while, and I'm like, you know, one of these days I'm going to make it. Well, tonight's that night. We are going to make pupusas for the very first time. And as many of you know, a lot of different cultures have like handheld pocket foods. You know, you got your lumpia over in the Philippines, you got egg rolls in China, dumplings, pierogies up in uh, the uh, northern um, uh, European area like Poland and stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's so many different types of pocket foods all over the world, empanadas in Mexico. Um, so pupusas, again, it's handheld, they're delicious, they're amazing, and like I said, making them tonight. So let's go work out, get rid of some of the calories first, because we are going to pig out on pupusas tonight. See you in a little. Hi again, everyone. Sorry, trying to get this so that you guys can see what I'm gonna do and then, you know, oh, there we go, perfect, you see me, yay! So I came back from the gym, gym was a good workout. Right now, I'm working on cardio um, and building up my stamina. It's been a while since I've actually been in a gym, working out in a gym, so I want to, like I said, just build myself up slowly. Plus, it's cold, it's winter here in Utah, it's been very, very cold the last couple days. And with my fibromyalgia, it is very difficult for me um, to function in the cold. I'm very cold sensitive, maybe even cold intolerant. Um, but yeah, so I did go to the gym. I spent about 45 minutes there, worked out, uh, got to uh, listen to some awesome music, Family Force 5, that got me into the group. Anyway, we're not going to dance yet, one day. <laughs> so again thank you again all so much for watching the octopus video thank you for being patient with me because i am learning i don't know anything about this and again this was a challenge so in a challenge i'm not going to know everything about what i'm doing but i'm going to learn i don't believe that practice makes perfect i believe practice makes better so let's get down to it so tonight like i said and i did a little video intro, but we're doing pupusas. And again, I want to thank my friend Lori and her husband and the family. I went to go see one of their children playing uh, Little League Baseball. And um, that's where I got introduced to pupusas back in Lompoc, California, my hometown. Hi, Lompoc. Um, <laughs> and you know, it's a wonderful memory that I have. It just made me so happy. Um, food is a love language to me. I'm sure it's a love language to many other people. But pupusas, it's really delicious, really easy. Before we start the pupusas though, uh, we are making a salad. And I'm making it, you know, kind of Southwest flavors, flair. So I have leftover corn from a couple nights ago, delicious corn. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil um, in my cast iron skillet that I gotta thank uh, 
the in-laws, Mama and, and Papa, my hubby's parents, for providing the cast iron skillet. I didn't, I, I always wanted to use a cast iron, but I was always kind of uh, timid about them. They do require special care, not like intensive special care, but you gotta take care of them so they last a long time. And um, I'm the kind of person that wants to wash all my dishes with soap. You don't wash cash, cash, cast iron with soap. S's, I have a hard time with S's. So <laughs> Anyway, um, so that was kind of a hurdle for me personally to get over. Um, I think we all have our little OCD moments on certain things. And, you know, I want to make sure everything's cleaned, washed. So, you know, you want to soak, do, 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 but not with cast iron. You do not use soap. Um, and I've come to love it. I will have to admit, I, I love the cast iron. It is a very versatile uh, piece of equipment. I have put it in the oven straight from the top of the stove top. It, it works really great and it heats evenly. So right now I am preheating it with a little bit of grapeseed oil. Uh, we keep it right by the stove top. Sometimes I use canola, sometimes I use grapeseed. I usually season the cast iron with grapeseed. And like I said, I'm happy with the results. So we'll just do that. I, ooh, you can feel it, it's so warm. I mean, like this is the warmest place in Utah right now. <laughs> it's my cast iron. <laughs> I swear that the iced tea is virgin. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna wait a little bit. I wanna see just a little bit of movement in the oil. I maybe even see just a little bit of smoke. If I do get smoke, we'll put on the fan. It's gonna be loud. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook up the corn. I'm gonna try to get like a, a little bit of an indoor char cause it's not going out on the grill. Um, just for the salad and it adds just another dimension to the salad. I got a salad kit. It's it's a basic kind of Southwest flavor salad kit. I think it's called Lime Fiesta or Fiesta Lime. Um, it's going to go great with the pupusas. Now, I have seen recipes with pupusas that you make kind of like a coleslaw. It's kind of like pickled vegetables, kind of like a, a pickled coleslaw, I should say. Um, I would be adventurous and try it myself my significant other, he does not like coleslaw. So I said, you know what? I didn't have that before with the pupusas. I just had pupusas. So let's forego the pickled slaw. I will try it someday. But tonight, like I said, we're just gonna do the pupusas, the little handheld pockets of yumminess and deliciousness. And uh, we'll do the salad. Right now I'm gonna go ahead at the corn. Oh ho ho, the sizzle, it's ready. One moment. That sizzle means that skillet's hot enough. It is ready. So I'm gonna get my trusty dusty Walmart spatula. I actually bought this about four years ago, I wanna say. Um, my roomie, Terry Rhodes, Terry, you, you might remember this spatula. It's still with me, I'm not letting it go. I'm not adding any seasoning to my corn. But you know what? because there is garlic salt and there's a little bit of butter still on this. But you know what would taste really good now that I'm thinking of it? Some chili powder. Chili powder on corn. Emma Lagasse, uh, I don't think you'll ever see this video. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get that far. <laughs> but Emerald, if you ever do, this is for you. Bam, 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 bam. And I think that's enough chill powder. <laughs> oh, I just have to do that. Also, uh, Daniel's son, if you ever get to see that, that was for you too. All right. Oh, elote. If you ever are blessed enough to have some elote, the, the real stuff, this is not elote. This is this is a knockoff, but if you ever have the experience to have true elote, do it. It is life changing. Like I said, I'm gonna go a little bit longer. I want to see a little bit of the char. Yeah, it might be a little hard seeing it because I did put chili powder on here, but we're gonna try anyway. 
And before I use, and we're gonna try to use just this cast iron skillet for tonight's dinner. So like I said, we're gonna heat up the corn, try to get a little bit of a, a char on it. We got a little bit of that um, chili powder in there. And like I said, I had this corn from Sunday's dinner, I wanna say. No, Saturday's dinner. It's still good, don't worry, it's still good. It's just Tuesday, just Tuesday. Um, I made oven barbecue ribs because again, we're in Utah. It's cold. I'm not going to go out there and barbecue. It's cold. Um, I think it got down to about seven degrees last night, maybe lower. Um, it's cold. it's cold. So there's garlic salt already on this. There's a little bit of butter on this corn already. That's why just some of that chili powder. And I'll tell you what, I like the look of this chili on here, on this corn. Oh, I like the smell too. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, this is rocking yummy. I do voices. Fair warning. After the fact. <clears throat> so another thing too, is that since this is such a simple meal, I'm really trying to be careful of how long the video gets because yesterday my video even with me cutting out and I did edit I found a really cool app to edit my video it still came out a little long so I'm gonna try to cut down the length of the video because um, I'm learning I'm learning I don't want to lose people just because the video is so long we're so used to TikTok; it's in, done in two seconds no I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> I don't really plan on going on TikTok. I think I'm old school and I'll, I'll be a, a YouTube person for now. I'm very old school, y'all. I really, <laughs> I remember MySpace. <laughs> I loved it because you got to choose your own background and you had your music start as soon as you got on the back. Gosh, I miss that stuff. Probably annoyed the crap out of everyone. <laughs> My background was the tropical, the hibiscuses. They're my favorite flower, if you can't tell. I got a big one on the back, too. But that's not this kind of show. We're not showing that today. Okay. I actually like the way this corn looks. I like the way it smells. I want it to cool a little bit before... We put it in the salad because if we put it in hot, it's just gonna wilt the salad. Oh, muscle, because this thing's heavy. Watch out, it's still got a flame going because we. Eh, this is so heavy. Uh oh. Corn on the floor, corn on the floor. Oh, there we go. Whew, that was fun. All right. We're gonna move the corn so it can go do its own thing for a little while. I'm gonna change out utensils and real quick, I actually don't see any corn on the floor. And my cat hasn't been by yet, but there's corn on the counter. We're gonna get rid of that. Okay. We're gonna add a little more oil to this pan. Now it already is hot. I'm not adding too much more. Pan is hot. I'm gonna switch out utensils. Wooden spoon, really good for this. So in here I have actually only a quarter of an onion. Uh, Cause it's just me and my husband, I really need to be more careful about portion control. Just me and my husband. And we don't really do too many leftovers. So that's a quarter of an onion, I'm cutting the recipe in half. And that is two garlic cloves through the press. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Now we're gonna cook down the onions like we did yesterday, just so they're softened. Yes, I did not clean out the skillet. I thought about it. I thought about taking a paper towel real quick to get whatever the corn left, but I think that the flavors are all just gonna mix together. Tastes good. It's all gonna be good. Mm -hmm. You hear that? This is called flavor. This is called an amazing night waiting to happen. 
I do use a lot of onion in cooking. I love onion. Onion is delicious. It's rarely the center of the dish. It's rarely the main um, element of your dish. It's usually a backup singer. It's, you know, it's not Beyonce. It's like Kelly and then Michelle, um, Destiny's Child. I'd be really old if I said Diana and then the two other Supremes. That, 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 that would have been really old. Anyway, so onion is a very strong supporting position when you're making your food. Onion just has that flavor that says, hey, wake up, and boom, you wake up. Garlic too. Garlic is very rarely the star of the show, but man, garlic also says, hey, wake up those taste buds. Let's get some yumminess going here. Garlic is great for your heart, we all know this. And onion is actually really good for your skin too. So onion is actually a very good health benefit. Yes, it can make you cry. There's those really strong onions that the juices just get into your eyes and overwhelm you. Um, you know, there's different ways of combating that. I've heard many different stories of how to uh, putting onion in the fridge. Sometimes that does help me. Um, I'll usually see if I can get glasses or something to go. Um, I have found with my fibromyalgia, as I'm pretty sure a lot of other individuals that suffer from chronic health issues, um, your senses actually are more sensitive and overwhelmed. So sometimes the onion is just too strong. All right, let me grab my beans now. We're not using pentos. We are using black beans. They, yes, these were in a can, and that's fine because if I use them from the bag being dry, this would have taken over 24, maybe even 48 hours to do because you have to soak the beans to get them soft. They're ready to go. So that was the leftover uh, rinse from the beans. Here we go, beans. Let me put the strainer down. All right, at this point, I am gonna add some salt. Let me also clarify, in the other video, the octopus video, I mentioned how I really don't like cooking with salt. Again, I'm not a big salty person. Uh, years ago, when I didn't cook for my husband and um, cook for someone else, I tried not to use too much salt. Um, number one, like I said, too much salt, it's just not appealing to me. It doesn't taste that great. It's not that fantastic. But also, there's a lot of heart disease in my family. A lot of heart disease. And too much salt, too much sodium can cause um, your blood pressure to be too high, hypertension. Um, and that puts me at a higher risk of other heart issues. Um, and I just don't want that. I'm already at risk because both sides of my family have heart problems. Uh, my father has had a heart attack, at least one. Uh, his father before that had heart attacks. My grandfather on my mom's side, heart attack. There's heart disease on both sides of my family. I do know for a fact that my father had high cholesterol. And I know that since I was 10 years old, I've had high cholesterol. So wherever I can, I'm gonna turn down my heat from medium to about medium low because I don't want to burn the onions. So like I said, with salt, I want to be careful. I don't want to over salt. If I'm doing a recipe that calls for something that already is salty, like um, fish sauce or soy or Worcestershire, um, I try not to use any more salt. I'm very cautious with my salt. I like building other flavors. I love using an Italian herb blend dry. I love that. That brings so much flavor. When I do use salt, it's usually garlic salt, but my husband loves kosher. And I'm cool beans with kosher. No dietary restrictions there, no religious practices. It's just that we like kosher salt. And kosher salt is technically not as salty as other salts. 
All right, I'm gonna just press down on my beans real quick to see how they're looking. I think I want them to go just a little bit longer because we are gonna mash the beans. Something else I'm gonna do is different than the recipe that I'm using. Again, I'm using parts of the recipe I found on Tasty's Facebook site. They make videos and if you haven't seen Tasty, I tell you, I could sit there watching these videos. I love watching those videos. And I have made so many of those recipes too that they've done. Oh man, I love it, I love it. In fact, for my birthday uh, a few years ago, back when I was living in Sacramento and I was roommates with um, my, my wonderful Terry Rhodes, um, her sister that lived right next door to us, Peggy, she surprised me with a tasty dessert on Facebook that I told everyone I'm gonna make this for myself. It was a peach kind of cheesecake with peach jello and uh, peaches. On, oh my, I love peach. Peach is one of my favorite fruit. So, and my birthday is during the summer. Perfect time to have peaches. So, uh, bless my heart so much. I will never forget that. Thank you again, Peggy. And thank you much, Terry, for all those wonderful, amazing memories. I love you both so much. Thank you, thank you. So when I think of stuff like that, I think of you too. Thank you. Anyway, Tasty, that's one of their recipes. So now what I'm gonna do, a little bit different than what Tasty wanted, is, well, no, actually, they, they want you to do this. I have a masher. Yes, I still have the heat on, but I'm gonna be very gentle, very gentle. I'm just mashing up the beans. We're making like refried beans. And I'm being very gentle, because again, this is a very heavy skillet. It's a hot skillet. This is actually turning out really good. This is looking like refried beans. One of my favorite tricks with refried beans, um, usually I get them from the can, um, is that I actually add taco sauce, mild taco sauce, because let's face it, I'm white, I can't take it. <laughs> I have all the, the, the uh, esophageal issues too. I don't do it. <laughs> so um, I like putting mild taco sauce in my beans, my refried beans, just to flavor them up. Now this is where I'm gonna venture a little bit from Tasty. I took, well, let's get rid of this first. I took two chicken thighs and I cooked it in my Dutch oven, my small Dutch oven, um, on low heat in red mild enchilada sauce from the store, the can. I shredded it up. It still has a lot of enchilada sauce. It has a lot of delicious flavor. In fact, I'm gonna try to scrape a little bit more of that sauce out of this bowl. And I'm gonna mix this into my beans. And I apologize, I keep going back and forth here. Um, if you're gonna touch the pan, use a pot holder, it's hot. I, I also don't like having a lot of clutter. I don't like having a mess. I like to be organized, cooking messes. You, get, you have stuff in here you don't need anymore. It just gets in the way. So this chicken is already cooked. This is chicken thigh, dark meat. I'm sure you can do white meat. This is an Amy adaptation. This is not part of the original recipe that I had. Um, I'm doing it because I love my proteins. <laughs> But also, I love dark meat from a chicken. Chicken thighs are really great. And you know, I remember back in the day, you could get chicken thighs for like 60 cents a pound, something like that. It was also a really easy economical thing to get. Okay, I am actually liking how this is looking. I don't need to cook the chicken. It's already cooked, it's just warming up and like I said, everything looks good. The beans look mashed. I'm gonna go ahead, turn this off, and then I'm gonna move this mixture into a different bowl so it can cool down. I will be back, and when we're back, we're gonna start making the actual um, outer casing, the, the holding uh, structure for the pupusas, and you'll see how to do it. It is easy, and I can't wait. So we'll be right back, give me a sec. 
All right, we're back. While we were gone, I cleaned up the kitchen a little bit, got prepped for the next part. We're gonna actually make the mesa that's gonna go around our meat mixture. Something I caught myself on as I was prepping everything, getting ready to go again, um, I didn't taste the bean and chicken mixture for flavor, for seasoning. Now, I was thinking about that too. My mom was a home cook. She wasn't professionally trained. She was trained by her Southern grandmother. And that's where I remember. I don't really remember my mom tasting food. She just knew it was gonna taste delicious, everything she did. So I think I get that confidence from my mom. Waving around a fork. Do you know that I talk with my hands and anything in my hands? So, but you watch all the great chefs. I mean, when I think of great chefs, again, I think of Emma Lagasse, I think of Paula Dean, I think of um, G um, uh, Gia De Laurentiis. I think I may have said her name wrong. I hope she forgives me. I really do hope she forgives me because she's cool. Anne Burrell, you want to taste your food. Oh yeah, and Ming. Ming's cool. All right, Ming Sai. So I'm gonna try, I need to get some of the bean mixture too. Let's see if it's seasoned right. I could just eat that by itself. That is amazing. That has enough salt for me. Number one comment my husband will make is that he wants double the salt. That's enough salt for me. That is, a, that is just, like I said, I could eat that by itself. That mixture would also be really good with like nachos or like if you just made like a quesadillas. Oh, this mixture, mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Let's get back to the thing at home. This is my very first time using this, it's mesa. And this is for, you know, your tortillas, your tamales, your pupusas, uh, empanadas, gorditas, sopas. This is for all of that. This is the base for all of those yummy, delicious foods. And yes, I have had some Spanish in class. I'm not very bilingual. I get by with some things. So um, some of my Lompoc friends, you can make fun of me because you know, you know me and how I talk. Anyway, for this recipe, I am gonna need two cups of masa. Brand new, just opened it. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, my mom used a knife. I just use the shake method. We're gonna get pretty darn close here. Okay, that's two cups. Salt. Yep, we're gonna salt this. And this time I'm just gonna shake out some salt. I'm not gonna do too much because that filling, oh, that's got salt in it. Last thing I have, again, we cut this recipe down in half. This is one and a half cups of cold water. Now I'm gonna first stir this up with the salt and just the mesa in my bowl. I love these bowls. They're all different colors. They're stacking bowls. They're, they're just great. I love these. You've probably seen me use a few of them with some of the ingredients uh, that I have prepared. These came from my husband's grandmother. Um, these were hers. She no longer needed them. Lois, thank you so much for these bowls. I love them. Okay. I'm going to pour in a little at a time. Not all of it at once. A little at a time and mix it in. So there's a little. Let's start mixing. And I want to see it coming together. This is not going to be quite a wet dough yet. This is going to be kind of crumbly, like if you're making a pie crust. Okay, let's add a little more. Let's mix it in a little bit more. I want to see it combining, incorporating. Right now, it looks like big boulder, like, like folders, like rocks you would pick up if you were walking along the train track. And I use that reference because where I grew up in Lompoc, um, you could go to the beach, you could go to Ocean Park or surf, they're right there, they connect, they're practically the same beach. But um, you would have to walk over the train tracks and there's all those um, granite rock crumbles there and stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna add the rest of my water. I'm gonna stir it just a little bit more and then now this is the part where I'm actually excited about. The dough's starting to look wet. 
I am actually getting my hands into the dough. I'm excited about this. Um, well, let's scrape down a little bit there. From there. All right, now we're gonna get into the dough. I'm excited because I like it when I can get hands on. This makes my day. And I'm just gonna knead it. Oh, this feels so cool. Actually, I've never felt a texture quite like this. It's not like kinetic sand where it's gritty, but I mean, it's cool and it is smushy, but you see that it's holding its shape. It is pliable um, and it's so basic and so easy. I am really enjoying the texture. This is a really good texture. Okay, there's a little bit of crumbs I have here in the bowl. I'm gonna try to incorporate these crumbs. I wanna use as much as possible. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna give it a second because I just realized that I don't have anywhere to put finished pupusas yet. So what I think the best option for me, because I don't want them to stick to a plate, I usually use a plate, but um, for this, I think I'm actually gonna get a sheet of parchment paper and I'm gonna put it over there where I'm gonna have my cast iron skillet. So let me get that together. Yeah, this looks good. This looks really good. I'm really like, hey, this is, I just wanna play with this. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to make food, but this feels so cool. I just want to play with this. I love how this feels. It's not gummy like Play-Doh, but it it's heavy like Play-Doh. I don't know. Let me wash. <laughs> I like playing with this. This is so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. me. I'm going to go wash my hands. <laughs> and then we're going to get some parchment. I will be right back. Okay, so I wash my hands and then I put the parchment over there. I actually got a bowl of some mozzarella that's already been shredded up. So because I cut this in half, the original recipe said I should have about 12 pupusas. So I should have six. What I did, because I love playing with this, I actually kind of made it into a log. Next thing I'm gonna do is just get a simple butter knife, regular simple butter knife, and I'm going to go about a third down my mesa, and another third. They're not gonna be equal, cause mm, there is not. So this is about a third. Now from here, well, we'll see how well this holds up. I'm gonna cut this in half. So in essence, this is one papusa here. <laughs> Minus all the deliciousness that's going into it. Okay, so trying to keep this together as best as I can. I'm gonna form like a pancake in my hand. Hi, Bear. My third cat, Bear, is stretching over here. He is just too cute and he knows it. He is mama's baby's boy. He's the only boy cat we have. All right, I'm gonna put, that might be a little too much actually. Get back in there. I said get, okay. So we have this, the, the bean and chicken. I'm gonna smash down some cheese. Now, for those of you that know me, you know I love my cheese. And we're actually gonna kind of mold this together. Yeah, I think I put too much of the mixture in. This is gonna look interesting. But remember, this is my first attempt, so hey, it's practice makes better. Yeah, if you know me, you know I love my cheese. When I was uh, sick and I had to have the allergy food tests, the uh, joke was that uh, if I turned out to be allergic to uh, cheese or, or dairy, um, I'm just going to die. <laughs> I'm not going without my cheese. <laughs> I am slightly allergic to dairy. <laughs> I'm actually slightly allergic to everything and allergic to more things. Um, I'm not, I have not been diagnosed with celiacs. I do not have celiac disease. And I'm very grateful for that. I have a lot of experience with uh, clients with celiac disease and it breaks my heart. It's, but you know what? There are so many new things out there that you can eat to replace that wheat, that gluten. And it's also experimenting, learning. So it's not as bad as it could be. I am allergic pretty much to soy. So I've gotta be careful of my soy intake. Um, I love 
Asian cooking. We're actually making Asian food tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I'm making my very first egg foo young. I've wanted to make that before and I'm doing it tomorrow. You're with me tomorrow, I hope. All right, so I messed up. It's a little messy. It should not be this messy on the outside, but this is the pupusa. It is the pocket with the meat and the beans and the cheese. All right, I'm gonna put this to rest over here. One down, five more to go. And I got cheese. We'll put it back there. <laughs> All right, same thing. I'm going to try to put a little bit less filling this time. Like I said, if I have leftover filling, that stuff's so good. Heck, I I like making omelets for breakfast. Well, all right, backtrack. So I work from home. <laughs> And all that I want in the morning before I get onto the computer to do work is my daily Activa uh, yogurt sh drink, I call it my shot, and my coffee. And then midway through my shift, I go and get the rest of the coffee. <laughs> so I really don't eat breakfast. It's, it's rare for me to eat breakfast during the week when I'm going to get ready for work. Um, so then I make myself lunch and it's usually an omelet. So I mean, even this mixture, oh, that'd be so good in like scrambled eggs, omelet. So, you know, it's not that bad. Come on. You know what? A tablespoon. And I'm actually gonna put this on one side this time. Last time I put it over the whole thing, this time one side. No berry bear bear, you do not get the pupusas. Pupusas not for this kitty cat, no. Okay, now I'm gonna fold it and see if I have better results this time making my pupusa. So it's not so messy on the outside. It's supposed to be a nice little pupusa. And you know, I feel this isn't as messy, but I didn't cover the pocket very well. Okay, maybe I'm making the pupusa too thick. That might be my problem. I might be making it too thick. So I need to work it a little bit more to thin it out. But again, first time doing this, I actually feel pretty proud of myself because this is something I never imagined I would do. This is something that I thought I was going to have to find a specialty store where I always have to go get these. But the more I learn to do things, I feel more accomplished, yes, but I also know exactly what went into all of this. I know exactly what ingredients, I know what exactly preservatives or no preservatives. So this makes me actually feel a little bit healthier and more in control of what I am and am not eating. So yeah, I'm very impressed and slightly proud of myself for this. This actually makes me feel good. All right. You don't need to see me make all six. I'm gonna make all six and we'll come back. We'll fry them up together. Okay, here we are, the finale. So now we've got the pupusas made. Here, I'll show you real quick. Hopefully not dropping my phone. Pupusas, that one's the worst looking. Anyway, so <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and fry them up. So again, my grapeseed oil, I cleaned out my um, cast iron skillet during one of the breaks we took. And I'm gonna go medium heat. Gonna let this warm up, get nice and toasty. And once I start seeing that it's warmed up and ready to go, then we'll go ahead and fry these up. I wanna have a nice crisp kind of skin to them. And we are gonna use the larger spatula. Now, one thing I do want to say uh, before we fry these up is that remember I said taste your food, make sure it tastes good, you have all the seasonings. Well, I did sneak off a tiny piece of the masa before I stuffed it, and I will say it tasted like a raw tortilla. 
<laughs> I don't know what I thought the masa was going to taste like, but it tasted like a raw tortilla. <laughs> All right, a little sip of the iced tea, raspberry iced tea. Mm, my husband bought me, uh, when I first moved in with him, uh, he bought me a gallon size um, oh, glass coffee. Uh, I used it, I used to use it to make cold brew coffee and it would be a gallon at a time. I would just grind up the beans, put them in the metal cylinder. Um, now that we live in a house, we're not living in a fifth wheel. Um, I have a coffee maker that is marvelous. I love it to death. It has the grinder on top. Um, and again, hubby found that for me. And uh, I use now my old coffee, uh, my old uh, iced coffee thing for uh, iced tea. And again, it's me making healthier choices. Tea is a better hydrant for my body than soda or uh, juices that have a lot of sugar in them. So it's unsweetened tea. I don't like sweetened tea too often. And that's good because again, I'm not adding extra calories and it's an herbal tea. So there's no extra, there's no caffeine. I already have all my caffeine in the morning while I'm working uh, and I'm, I'm having my coffee, so I don't need any excess caffeine. This is perfect. And it looks like my oil is heating up. Warmest place in Utah. <laughs> all right. It looks like it is warming up. I can see that the oil is kind of moving on its own. I don't see it smoking. I don't really want it to smoke, but I want it to be hot because I don't want a lot of excess oil in the pupusas themselves. I want a crisp, but not a lot of excess oils. Yeah, it's starting to glisten. You missed it, Bear was so cute. He kept on trying to get at the, the, the bean and chicken mixture because he could smell it. Um, gosh, he's so adorable. He's, he's my chunkers though, you, can, you can't see him, I just saw the angle. He's, uh, I got my cat's food and their water fountain over there, so he's over there at the food. He's just so adorable. He was the smallest one when we got him and, and his foster sister, Sandy, over a year ago, and now he's the biggest. <laughs> it always happens, always. This was the first pupusa ever that I made. Okay, it's hot enough. If it made no sound, oh, I gotta be careful. I, I don't wanna splash oil on me. Okay. I'm only gonna do three at a time. If I overcrowd, there's not enough heat. And then it's difficult to flip them because we are gonna flip them. Let me get a plate. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is something that I'm really looking forward to. I'm so excited. Um, like I said, when I first had these, uh, it was just so incredible. They were bigger and thinner, um, but you know what? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how they look. They actually look similar to a pupusa. It looks similar to the ones in the video, at least. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited about this. So these are cooking up. Um, and I wanna flip them so you can see that, that golden like little bit of crispiness that we're gonna get, but we're just gonna give them a few minutes and then we'll come right back. All right, so I did flip them over. Let me show you what they look like. This is after, this is still the first batch and you can see that they're starting to brown up a little bit. Um, I'm probably gonna flip them over again just to get a little bit crisper, but they're looking great. So I also put the salad together that we're having for dinner tonight. So it's gonna be the pupusas because they're gonna be filling and then the salad. So when we come back, you'll see a finished plate. All right, and here's the finished plate for tonight's dinner. I have three pupusas, my husband has three, and then we have this yummy little salad. So it's hot but I'll go ahead and take a bite for y'all. That is amazing. That tastes so good. It reminds me of just that first time I ever had a pupusa. So good. 
I'm definitely gonna try making these again. I think a little bit saucier next time, but definitely make these again. And then the salad, it was just a simple, easy kit that I added that corn to that you saw earlier. It's good. All right, so tomorrow, hopefully everything goes right. We'll be able to make egg foo young tomorrow with noodles. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me today. Take care.